you may think that you know your bass drum really well and you've settled on your sound with your muffling scenario, but today we are gonna take you through five definitely severely different sounds that are achievable with adjustments to the muffling and you might find something that you like even better. First thing that we want to say up front is that this is a purchase-free experiment today. We're going to use things that we found around the house. We're not putting on special drum heads or doing anything dramatic other than moving through some options for muffling to really stretch the limits of what this drum is capable of. For those of you out there that are feeling quite attached to the way that you set up your bass drum both in tuning and in muffling, this is the video for you. This is gonna take your ears as far as possible away from a severely muffled sound and see exactly what is going on in this drum as we move through all of these iterations. Don't forget to stick around all the way to the end of the video today too because we are gonna have a back-to-back -back comparison of all five of these sounds so you can hear just how different they truly are. There is also gonna be additional content from this video on our Patreon, so follow the link below. Check it out, there's lots of great stuff over there. First up, We've taken all of the muffling out of the drum so we can hear exactly how the heads are behaving and interacting with the drum. This is a very wild sound. There's a lot of sustain, a lot of overtones present. Doesn't exactly sound like a modern bass drum sound, but this is giving us an opportunity to hear what it is that we're, um, that we're affecting when we put muffling in there. For today's demonstration, we chose to go with a single ply, in this case a coated G1 batter on the bass drum, because we want to hear as much as possible, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. So this is an unmuffled batter head versus what we often use, like an EMAD or an EQ4, or something like that. In addition to all of the sustain and overtones that are flying around in here, this is a very unfriendly setup if you are a person who buries the beater into the batter head. This makes sense because there's a lot of resonance, the heads are moving a lot, and if we had a pillow or something like that in there, we wouldn't have to worry about that. This is an opportunity also for practicing keeping the beater off of the head and utilizing the rebound because with no muffling, we're getting the most of that. For all of the demonstrations today, we are miking the drum through the port because we want a consistent setup for comparison of all these sounds. But if this setup sounds bananas to you, check out what it sounds like if we take the mic out and put it in front of the head instead. This is a lot more tone. This is the way that we would mic a bass drum normally if it didn't have a port, just in front of the head like that. And before we move on to any of the other setups that we're gonna do today, we wanna offer a little audio of each of these heads individually so you can hear the sort of range that they're tuned in. It's really important for us to mention that this doesn't matter. <laughs> How you tune your drum is gonna sound good to you with your drum and your heads and all that stuff. This is where we landed for a sound that made us happy today. Don't consider this a prescription for any particular sound. Up next, we're gonna add a felt strip to the batter head and see how that sounds along with some slight adjustments to the tuning.
a lot of us out there think that felt strips are for jazz because surely for me that's the first place that I saw them and I think that's fairly common because it's a sort of tone that works in that kind of music and goes with the tradition. Having said that, it's not just for jazz. For me, it's for most any drum and particularly if I want to have tone and openness and a big sound but I need just a little bit of control of those overtones. The other thing that this affords us is the option to tune the batter head a little bit lower than we could get away with with the fully wide open sound. We have a previous video that goes deep on both the tuning and adjustments of setting up a felt strip sound, so go ahead and check that out if you want to learn more. Next step, let's go a little further. Let's take a towel, place it inside of the drum, and ramp it up against both the batter head and the reso. This is my, or I should say closest to my normal setup if I'm just putting together a bass drum that I want to have be versatile and usable in a lot of situations. What this is giving us now is more control of both of the heads, a little bit less sustain, but at the same time, it's not so much muffling that we're getting into the realm of the whole dynamic range sounding the same. If I play softly off of the head, I get more of the sub part of the sound and it sounds nice and warm, it's good for feathering, but at the same time, if I play harder and maybe even bury the beater, it still sounds beautiful all the way up at the top of the range. This is also a plenty loud sound, particularly with a single ply batter head. It's got a lot of attack and for me, sits in a band mix or sits in my practicing in the way that I want. Time to go all the way, a big old pillow in there. This, for us, sounds exactly like we would expect. It's very punchy, it's got fatness to it, it's a very short sound. It's really, really similar sounding from the low dynamic up to the really loud stuff. And basically, I mean, to be blunt, it's kind of one note. It does this thing and it does it really, really well. Now, it's important to note that this does differ from our normal pillow setup here when we're making the rest of our videos because we have swapped out our normal EMAD for this coded G1. The feel is a little bit different, the volume is a little bit different, but the more important thing to mention is that anytime you change a variable, you're changing everything. So using the same pillow and rezo as we always do, but swapping out the batter head is actually giving us a whole new feel and changing the character of the drum pretty dramatically. Before anybody gets concerned that we are saying that this is not a valid sound, again, we must stress that these are all valid sounds and there is an appropriate time for all of them. So if you love a big pillow in there, that is totally great. What we want is for you to consider the possibility that there might be other things that would make you happy too. On the flip side, if you swear by wide open bass drums and muffling is your absolute enemy, please consider trying out at least the towel, if not the full pillow, and learn about what that does to your playing, to your sound. Maybe you have to make adjustments to the pedal or change the tension of the heads a little bit. There's a whole world of possibilities there. We have one more, this is the wild card. We are going all the way back to no muffling and we're also gonna take the resonant head off.
We have seen plenty of photos, videos of drums with the Rezo off and a big pillow in there, but there's another thing going on that we just really wanted to address because it sounded so cool in the process of making this video. That is what happens when we play this drum just with a batter, nothing else at all. In this case, the mic is not even moved to a different location. We kept it at the spot that it was when there was a port in a Rezo head. So what we're hearing here is strictly just the sound of that head coming off. This is definitely a special occasion sound, but also it struck us as we were listening to it that we've heard this sound on recent recordings, on old recordings, even some avant-garde stuff. I could imagine it being in a classical situation because it feels a little bit concert bass drummy. And this would also react pretty dramatically if we chose to swap out the beater on the pedal too. This is a super fun setup to experiment with because since we're only dealing with a single head, every adjustment that we make, we know exactly what's happening because it's not interacting with anything else. That means that pitching it up, pitching it down, adding a little bit of muffling, adding a lot of muffling, we're only dealing with one head and we can really get into the nuance of what these changes are actually doing. We've explored five really different sounds here that each have their own setup to achieve that sound, but bear in mind also that these are not single pillared things that live in a vacuum. These are much more like a tree with branches coming off of it, where each one of these setups can be adjusted in little ways to get a really different sound or something just slightly different if you need to massage it towards something that gets you what you're looking for. This means for us that we can A, find things that make us happy and stick with that, or B, get into the nuance, the little changes, all the possibilities in there that are inherent in not buying new heads, not buying new drums, not buying special muffling devices that cost an arm and a leg. No, pillow, towel, felt strip, plenty. All right, we've made it. It's time for the back-to-back -back comparison of all of these sounds. Hearing them back to back like that really speaks to the possibilities inherent in any of the drums on the drum set. And the bass drum, at least in my experience, gets the least amount of love when it comes to exploring the possibilities. Most people just put something in there, set it and forget it, and it would really be best for all of us to make sure that we know what these things are capable of. Also, it bears repeating that we did not change out the head, same batter head the whole time, got all of those sounds, albeit with minor tuning adjustments to make sure that things are working well together, which is part of exploring. And we found sounds in this drum today that we've never heard and we've been playing this drum for a long time. <laughs> If you enjoyed what you saw today, please follow the link below to the Patreon. It is the best way to help us continue to make this show, do explorations like this, hopefully save you a few dollars along the way. And of course, always please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you hear about our new videos. Lastly, we would love to know about your explorations of muffling. Did you get away from something you were used to? Did you find something that worked better for you? Tell us all of it.